Me here, we are live. We're going to be talking about outside linebacker drills and overhang safety drills. They're the same. Uh, I don't differentiate greatly between the difference between a 425 and a 44 defense. If you've been around me very long or you've seen me stuff my stuff before, you know that I don't think there's any difference whatsoever. I'm not here to overcomplicate freaking football that a bunch of kids play. In fact, that's one of my kind of passions is simplifying this game because it's it shouldn't be that complicated. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about uh, some drills that you can use. Uh, if you're a drill junkie and you just want 9,000 drills to run, I'm not your guy. Uh, I'm going to tell you a few drills that you can use to get better force uh, against the run out of your outside linebackers or overhang safeties, whether you're a 4-2-5. This is primarily looking at 4-2-5, 4-4 defense, or 3-3-5, 3-5-3 type of defense. Uh, and that would also include 5-3 and 6-2 uh, because your ends should be, if you're running a sound defense, should be your force players. So... That's what we'll be talking about uh, on this live session. If you have questions, uh, please go ahead and introduce yourself in chat in the comments, and uh, I will answer a couple questions at the end if we have time. All right, so this is all going to go along with episode 209 of the Football Coaching Podcast. And if you haven't listened to that yet, it came out today in iTunes. Our episodes will be coming out on Wednesdays for now uh, during the season in iTunes uh, and on the website. So you can go to joedanielfootball.com slash 209 to get that as well. And it's all about how to coach your overhang safeties. And again, as I said at the outset, your overhang safeties are are the same thing as outside linebackers. They're your force players. They're your flat defenders. You can make it super complicated, and you can talk about nickelbacks and all this. I'm not going to go into that. It's all in the episode 209 uh, of the Football Coaching Podcast. So, so go ahead and check that out. What I'm going to talk about here, um, last night we did a live session specifically for, we're doing every Tuesday night during the season, a live session for Joe Daniel football clients. And so our JDFB insiders uh, which you can go to jordanielfootball.com, click on the join button up at the top to get all the information about that. You get access to all of our systems. Uh, and then if you're a member of one of our individual systems, like the 425 Defense, which you can go to 425defense.com to check out. Um, we get in there and do live Q&A on Tuesday nights for anything the guys have. Uh, you know, questions about during the season, problems you need to fix, things you need to solve, personnel issues, adjustments, defending a certain front that you haven't seen or a certain, uh, you know, attacking a front, whatever it is. Um, and one of the things that came up, kind of going along with the podcast, was some questions about outside linebackers and outside linebacker drills. And I said at the time, I'm not a drill guy. I'm, I'm just not, I don't value drills. I know some guys are, are, are drill junkies, and there's so many drills on the internet, and there's so many drills out there that you could run. And I see coaches that are running drills with no purpose other than to fill time. You know, you've got 20 minutes of individuals, man, I've got to have four or five drills to run during this time, or... Or my kids are going to be bored. I don't want the kids to be bored. I don't care if they're bored. They shouldn't be bored if you're working, um, if you're teaching, if you're coaching, if you're enthusiastic, if you let them know this is important. Uh, they shouldn't be bored. And so I don't believe in everyday drills because I'm also not going to go out there and do the exact same thing every single day. But my viewpoint on drills is that drills are for solving a problem and they serve no other purpose. They are not a time filler. Um, they are not supposed to be fun, though they shouldn't be miserable. Um, drills serve the purpose of solving a problem. So if you are having a problem with your um, with your offense or your defense, you've got a player that has something that they're supposed to be able to do on the field, and they are not able to do that. They're not able to execute that then that is an issue that I need a drill for. And so when guys, uh, drill ideas are great, but you can go to YouTube and you can look at a million different drill ideas. Um, and each one of our systems comes with kind of a core, what you might call everyday drills. They're the, they're the core drills that you would start with. But the fact is, um, and I'm just trying to get to where I can see uh, these. There we go. Um, the fact is that you can't just run drills. I can't tell you. Um, for example, I can't I can't play in your practice because I'm not watching your film and seeing what your guys are doing. Um, I'll give you an example. My defensive lineman right now. We've been working on keep all we do one thing all day um, for the most part. I mean, they read the feet, read the feet, read the feet because we're a two gap kind of front. Um, the problem we're having right now is is pad level, and so I've got 
people yelling at him, hey, you know, pad level, pad level, pad level, pad level. That doesn't mean anything. Um, so all I've been working on in drills is hands above eyes. And, like, it's all part of the same drill we always do, but I'm just focusing on that one element of it. Um, and that, to me, is going to be more effective, we're upside down here, than yelling at guys. Uh, and, and, and so when I work a drill, it's to solve that problem. Um, and, and even though I say I work the same drill over and over and over and over again, I'm not going to keep working that drill if we don't have a problem related to it. Now, I've simplified their position to a point where this is what they do. And again, just in case anybody's wondering, I, I'm, not, I'm the offensive coordinator in our current staff. Uh, so this isn't, I, I don't teach the two gap deal um, very much, although I'm learning it. And I, and I wouldn't do it, but I know guys who want to do it. And so I'll be happy to talk to you about it sometime. Um, maybe something I'll add in. But anyway, let's talk about these outside linebackers because I'm pretty simple in what we do with these guys. So I start out with a read. And the read, if you listen to Football Coaching Podcast, episode 209, you can go to jodanielfootball.com uh, and you can get all that information uh, on the read. I go through how we read the quarterback, why we do it, what we do it, you know, what we're trying to find out, what we're trying to see. Um, but essentially, and I talk about where we fit, but this is a real simple starting drill. Okay, So this would be... This is our force fit drill. And I've got three cones out here. This cone is a guard, this cone is a tackle, this cone is our fit point. And I'm gonna use a running back. And I'd like to have a quarterback or a coach simulating this movement. Um, and it's gonna start off really simple. It'll start off with an outside run, like a stretch. And all I'm gonna have this running back do I'm going to have my outside linebacker, whatever your alignment is. Now, we our base alignment is seven yards wide and three yards deep. Um, we're keying the quarterback, but let's, you know, keep it, let, let's put it wherever it's going to be. Okay, this is our strong safety or outside linebacker, whatever you want to call him. It really doesn't matter. I go through in the podcast why I call him a strong safety, even though he's probably really not. And I'm going to have this quarterback come out, and let's say we're just going to run a simple stretch path. Okay. That quarterback's probably not going to go through all that on day one. And I'm going to have this running back. I put this cone there for this running back to run directly at it. And my strong safety reads, and he bounce reads. And again, whatever you read, whatever your keys are, if you want to read end man on the line of scrimmage, I would have an end man out here giving him a run read. So, so it gets used to training his eyes to go from, for us, quarterback to backfield. If you read key backfield, then that's fine. So we're doing this, and this is called our force fit drill. And all I'm teaching them is to rerun, come downhill. They're coming to a spot one by one off of where the defensive end would be, getting to that spot, and then I'm going to tell this R to either cut it back or bubble it to the outside. Okay, so day one, he's learning. If I turn it back inside, I fold back in. If I bounce it to the outside, I shuffle out. Okay, and so that's day one. That's all he's doing is getting the read and coming downhill. And I can add in elements with play action and um, you know whatever else I want to do. If I want to turn this into a naked or turn it into a, a keep pass, or you can build on that drill. So this is one drill, but I can build on this drill. So the first thing that I can add in is I can change the path of the R. Um, I could take this cone out, let my R have uh, maybe, or, or leave that cone there, and maybe tell my R. Um, I could throw in a, let's say, a one, a two, and a three. And I can make this three plays. Again, I can expand this thing. I don't just do this at random. I do this based on what do we actually see. And so I might tell my Q or my coach and my R, hey, we've got three plays that we run. And the strong safety has a different reaction to each. And so let's say that he's going to get a... Inside zone, and again, I've got to teach my R's to do this. Or he's going to get the stretch where we started. This is why I like to use a coach as the cue because it's just easier. Um, you know, whatever the quarterback, you want to you want to adjust this from week to week based on what your opponent actually runs. And then maybe they've got a a toss. And the key here is I want the quarterback action, because we're keying quarterback, I want the quarterback action to match up with what they do. 
I'm not going to spend a lot of time on one because it's not critical to my strong safety. Okay, I'm going to spend more time on two and three because he's the force player. Um, but that's that's a beginning drill. I can add in beyond that now. Okay, again, and this is why I don't have a ton of drills. I just build and build and build and build. But now I can say, all right, I want to build. Let's say I want to just build on the two. I'm going to add in, and this is what we do. We work. Um, we work a lot of rip move because we've had, especially uh, recent years, we had very small uh, outside backer overhang safeties. And so they weren't really good at coming in and crash uh, uh, block destructing with the shoulder uh, into the blocker. So we've been using rip move because if they're, you know, I had where we were at before, like 200 and something pound tailback leading up on 145 pound OLB. Like that's a loss <laughs> unless they just, you know, Unless we do something else. So we use this quickness and, and we rip move it um, because I feel like it would give a smaller service. But that's all, you know, that, that's all in how you block destruct and that's a different topic. But I might want to come out here and say, okay, we're going to add a new element to this. I'm going to add in a blocking back. And so now rather than cutting off of the cone, I'm going to have my R follow my blocking back. My blocking back is going to come out here to block the strong safety. And so the strong safety now has the added element, gets his read, and he's going to come and either block destruct. Well, he's going to block destruct. He should block destruct. And what I teach on the block destruct is that if he's attacking this thing here, and again, we want to meet a little more in this area, one by one, and then shuffle out. Because what I want to teach them is if you do a good job, this guy will either cut back to the pursuit or he'll be forced to bubble. And again, I've got to train my R's, okay, who are probably other outside linebackers. I've got to train them to be good teammates. And so I'm probably going to start this out at like 50%, 60%, 70%, not full speed day one, knowing that. I'm going to get to a point where we can run this drill quickly and effectively, um, but it's probably not going to be right now. It's probably not going to be right away. So I'm just going to expand on this drill and build on this drill over time. If you guys have questions or comments or anything, um, I will try to answer some questions at the end. And it's, it's just PowerPoint, um, the program. Uh, I'll try to answer some questions at the end. But that's force fit drill. So like I said, this is one drill. And so when you're looking for 19,000 drills, we just expand this to look more like the game. We start out with the one-on-one, -on -one, my strong safety, getting his read off the quarterback and fitting on the R, okay? We don't have tackling to the ground, you know, it's dumb, that's, that's dumb. This is a purpose, the purpose of the drill is a read, right? Uh, I can, especially with no blocker in front of him, so like, hey, let me see if you can run this guy over. Dumb, don't do that. I could add in a tackle off the blocker once he's got a blocker, you know, if I want to. Um, but even then, I'm not going to go full speed right away because they've got to learn to feel this. And I'm more and more becoming a believer in learning to feel how, it, not a walkthrough, not where we're just walking through and everybody's lazy and giggling, but where we are slowly progressing through a perfect rep. In other words, stepping it. Um, we started, something I got from Lou Johnson, we started bird walking our offense. Where I just said, go, go, go. And they one step, one step, one step one step and the defense is one step with them um and i'm going to do the same thing on this early on so that they feel what it's supposed to feel like so that's force fit drill and again i can continue to build this i can add in other elements i can add in a receiver and a corner and turn it into cracker place that's going to be the number that that's going to be the first drill that we do um and it's you know it's one side it's one one-on-one -on -one. and i will basically take this and progress it to our umbrella drill. Uh, and there's not a lot of, like I said, now the other things we're gonna do, we're gonna block destruct, one-on-one -on -one block destruct. However you teach a block destruct, you would teach hands, you teach shoulder, you teach rip, whatever you do. Um, I tend to teach all of them because I want to give guys options and some guys are better at certain things. Uh, and so I'll work some of them, uh, you know, I'll, I'll work each one of them individually at the beginning. And then I'll say, okay, hey, you know what, Tommy, you're really good at the rip move. 
You do more of that. Bobby, you're great with the shoulder. You do more of that. And give him options. Give him a tool, you know, give him a tool chest to work from. Um, but then I'm going to progress. Uh, like I said, we'll block destruct. We're going to work tackling. I'm going to have drills for their pass drops or pass reads or whatever that is, too. Um, I'm going to have drills for their blitzing. So we're going to tackle. We're going to block destruct. We're going to uh, work drills on blitzing, back up with the quarterback edge blitzes. We're going to work on um, pass drops. We're going to work on, but we're ultimately going to get to this umbrella drill. Uh, and this is something I took from when I was studying a lot of TCU stuff. I saw it on some TCU videos somewhere. And all that I'm going to do, if you don't know the umbrella concept, go to, um, I believe it's at 425defense.com slash podcast. Maybe at YouTube too. Uh, 425defense.com slash podcast and take a look at that. The video is free. There's nothing, you don't need to put anything in. If the video interests you, there's a free three video series on the 425 defense that you can get by entering your email address. But the video on understanding the umbrella concept is free and you can get it um, without putting anything, without putting any, you know, there's no barrier or anything like that. So what we do with this is from week to week, we set up what we're going to see. I'm going to see a two-back formation with a tight end, let's say. I'm going to set up my fullback, tight end, tailback, and then our strong safety, weak safety. And again, this is 425. Uh, you can call it whatever you want. Be four two five cover three, basically same as a four four cover three. It's no different. I don't care what you call it. Um, and I'm going to line up this umbrella concept, and I'm going to start going through what they do. And usually three things, three to four things. I'll do best outside run plays. So there's no reason for me to work on ISO in this drill. There's no reason for me to sit there and go, okay, ISO. Here's what you, here's what you do. Here's how you react. Like. It doesn't matter how they react to an ISO, okay? So I'll say, all right, this team, I-formation team, um, let's just say that their best play outside run game is toss. And so I'm going to show them toss strong. I'm going to show them toss weak. I'll have a live Y out here because I might play action with him. I'll have a live Y out here if I was keying him, which I'm not usually. Um, we're keying the quarterback. But he's just a good guy to have out there to see it. If they were going to pull like we do our truck toss, they're going to pull the tackle. I'll put a live tackle out there. Whoops. Okay, whatever you need, the pieces that you need. And this drill is where I'm going to, again, spend the majority of my time. I'm going to work block destructs, especially early in the season. I'm definitely going to work tackling. I'm going to build a lot of our pass into this, where I can give them a pass read off of this and see their drops um, or their man coverage or whatever it is. This is, and again, guys say, well, you like, I'm looking for drills. This is it. Drill the game. Drill the game. This is their game. And I always tell... My favorite thing to tell defend, defensive players uh, that I coach is win the one-on-one -on -one game. Play the one-on-one -on -one game. That strong safety's one-on-one -on -one game is that H-back coming to block him right now. He gets his read. He's coming up, and he's meeting this thing. And again, I want to meet him right about there. Bam, slam him and shuffle or whatever you teach. My free safety, slow pedal, it's a run. You see the toss, getting down in the alley, okay? Weak safety, breed step, all right? Counter reverse bootleg, ball goes away, counter reverse bootleg, and then pursuit angle. And I'm gonna work that. I'm gonna start it out slow. Monday, here's what they do. Here's the backfield action on their top three outside plays. And their top three outside plays may not all be run plays, most likely not. Okay, ball sweep, um, maybe a stretch or an outside zone, uh, a play action that attacks the perimeter. Okay, what are those plays? And that's what my safeties and my free safety are going to work on. So I am not a believer that I need 10,000. Uh, 
I'm not, you know, that I'm going to need 10,000 different drills. That I'm going to break it down to the small things and I clear out the mess for them in your individuals. The individuals are about the one-on-one -on -one game. Okay? How little do I need? I might even take this R. I, I might even take the R out. If, if, if we're having trouble, I've done this too. If we're having trouble, and again, just have the quarterback go through the motion with the ball or whatever and have him catch it uh, and then stop. But I've had where the big issue was the block destruct. And so I'm going to have him, I'm going to say, I say take him out. I need somebody to catch the pitch. But then he's dead. I don't, don't come off to tackle him. Defeat the block. Because I'll get the R running some wild path here, and the strong safety never makes engages with the H because we don't run toss sweep with a lead blocker or whatever. And now all of a sudden we're getting all kinds of crazy stuff. He's just running outside. And I'll say, look, here's our issue. Drills are for solving problems. Let's take everything out. The R is dead once he catches the pitch. You block destruct the H. And don't worry about anything else. Win the one-on-one -on -one game. Okay. So I hope that gives you some ideas, guys. That's, I mean, in this drill, I'm getting block destruct work. So do I need to continue to work five minutes of block destruct one-on-one -on -one every single day? Not after a certain point, once we've established that we, we know how to do it. You know, early on, certainly. Um, but, you know, after a certain point, I'll take out the block destruct. I'm still going to tackle because I don't want to live tackle um, too much in this. So we're definitely going to have, and, and obviously tackling is the most important safety-wise. We're going to work plenty of that. But, like, do I need 10,000 drills here? No. I mean, let's play the game. Let's get out here and, and take out the unnecessary pieces. Football's 11 on 11. I'm talking about one guy. What does he need to play the game? Well, he's got to block, he's got to key the cue, okay, because that's who we key, whatever you key. He's got to key the cue, defeat the block, make the tackle. We'll get everybody else out of there. Get the guy who's, he's keying, the guy who's his block threat, and the guy he needs to tackle in there. Simplify, simplify, simplify. That's, that's the most important thing. If you have questions, you can post them in the comments or uh, uh, just uh, post them in the chat box there. Uh, and, and I'll hang out for a few minutes. Um, let me just look back here. And like I said, this is PowerPoint. It's not a big deal. <laughs> it's, it's nothing special there. Uh, Ronaldo says, let's see. Beat number two off the snap. I don't, we're nowhere near number two on the snap. We're keying quarterback on the snap. Um, The linebackers are, it's whatever you play. I mean, whatever you play. Uh, Ronaldo, that's how far off the linebackers are off the line of scrimmage. It's whatever you do. Um, mine, my strong safety is seven by three, seven yards outside, and uh, three yards off the line of scrimmage is base rule. But that, that's um, what I would say chalkboard rule is seven yards outside for the strong safety, three yards off. I got that from TCU. We align wider. Again, if you listen to the podcast, um, go to, if you want to get all this information on alignment, my opinions on alignment, listen to the podcast, jodanielfootball.com slash 209, um, or go into iTunes and search football coaching podcast. Uh, and that will tell you everything you need to know about what I think about outside linebackers over rank safeties. Um, you know, it, it all depends on your coverage. It depends on what you do. Um, some guys are three by three. That's fine. Some guys, uh, my weak safety is five by five. If there's no tight end ever, um, and I give all the reasons for that as well. So, uh, you know, without going in depth, like our guys are, um, our guys are seven by three on the strong side, seven yards wide, three yards off, five by five on the weak side, base rule. But then really the true base rule is a line to perform, line up where you need to be in order to, um, in order to make the play. Uh, do they fit on number two as soon as they see R coming out? Are they expected to beat a number two receiver? Uh, we're 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 run first guys. If R's if we're the force player, so if um, R is coming out there, we we've got to force it. Now, if you're talking about having a number two outside of us, we don't. We play five by one. We play one yard outside of number two receiver, um, five yards off of him, and because our primary job is to force. So there is a divider rule if he goes out past a certain point, uh, which is really going to be a lot based on game plan that will go back inside. But if you're talking about a split number two receiver, um, 
you know, we're not going to be outside of him. So we're going to beat, yeah, we have to beat the blocker first. And then, and then attack the R. Always you've got to defeat the block. I tell our linebackers, outside safeties, whatever, um, you should expect to beat a block before you make a tackle. You should expect. Do you always have to? No, because teams screw up. But you're not good if you're making tackles uh, and nobody's blocking you. Like, that doesn't make you good. What makes you good is if you're defeating a block and making a tackle. When you make a tackle because somebody didn't block you, that doesn't make you good. That shouldn't go on your highlight film. Like, it shouldn't. Um, and I've been in college, and I've, I've you know, the, the most valuable linebackers to recruit were the ones who defeated a block. There's tons of guys with highlight films that they're just making, you know, open field tackles, essentially. Um, so I hope that answers your question. We should always be expecting to defeat a block first. Um, one of the things we teach our guys is know who your block threat is. Uh, and again, that's going to come in this drill. That's going to come in the drill that we're running here where we're going to say, uh, you know, here's their best plays on the outside run. Who's blocking you? Well, it's either, you know, the H back or the number two receiver or, you know, it could be a crack block. We should get a crack call from the, from the corner. Um, whoever, know your block threat. All right, guys, appreciate it. Thank you very much. If you've enjoyed this video, if it's been helpful to you, please like and share. Get more coaches on here. I greatly appreciate you jumping on here on a Wednesday night. Check out my YouTube channel, joedanielfootball.com slash YouTube, if you want a bunch of other videos. I uh, hope this gives you some ideas on how to work your outside backers. I use the By the way, I use the exact same drills for quarter safeties. Um, any force player is going to use these exact same basic drills because they're the force defender. So any force defender is going to use the same drills. You can use it. Um, if you're interested in more about the 425 defense, check out 425defense.com for all the information on how you can get instant access to the 425 defense system at a pretty cheap price. Um, I kind of put it together because I want, uh, uh, you know, I wanted something that you can learn football from without having to invest $3,000 in it. Um, and you can get access right now pretty cheap. So go to jodanielfootball.com um, or excuse me, go to 425defense.com to check out my 425 defense system. If you're interested in the 34 defense or the 33 defense, uh, 33 defense or 34 defense, those are also included in the JDFB Insider membership. Go to jdanielfootball.com slash join and you get access to all five of the systems. So a lot of stuff there. If you have questions, email me. Um, thank you very much, guys. Have a great evening. Thanks for joining me on Joe Daniel Football Live. And remember, Coach Simple, play fast, win.